Hi everyone, it's Lindsay. Welcome back to another video. Today I want to share with you how to make some vintage ephemera for your junk journals. Now I like a little bit sturdier ephemera. You can of course buy it at the store, but there are so many great resources online. I love looking at the vintage images and finding them myself that I like to print them off and make them myself. Now there are a few places that I like to look for the images. There are of course more places out there, but my favorites are Flickr, Pinterest, the Library of Congress, and the Met Museum. Now one thing to note, whenever you are looking for your images, if you're going to make these items and you're going to sell them, you need to make sure that you are using images that are copyright free or they're in the public domain. Now, once you have your images and you have them printed off, I like to back them with paper. This makes them more sturdy. What I like to use personally are index cards or cardstock that I have tea dyed to make them look a little bit more old. Uh, craft paper is great, white tea dyed cardstock, black cardstock. You can even use some cardstocks that have different patterns on them. That's a lot of fun as well. Now a few more things you're gonna need. You're going to need something to cut out your images. Scissors and X-Acto knives are my favorite. You're gonna need glue. I'm using regular Elmer's glue. And then I also like to have a needle tool. I'll show you why in a little bit. I also like some distress inks and another pair of scissors. These are what I use to distress. And I'll show you how to do that. So first things first, I cut out my images. After I've printed them, and I will say I use a laser printer. You can use an inkjet printer. It really does not make a difference with this particular project. Use whatever you have on hand to print. Then I cut them out. You could of course just glue this down to a piece of cardstock and then cut out. It's gonna save you a step. However, I go to the trouble of tea dyeing all my backing papers and that kind of thing. I'm not gonna waste that. And if you end up just gluing these down as is, you're gonna waste a lot more of your paper when you cut out. So I like to just take this extra time, cut them out first, then I will go and I will glue them down. Now as I'm cutting out, you will notice that I cut around the edges. I'm also going to cut any openings that there may be. So this is a coin holder, a vintage coin holder that I've printed out. I'm gonna cut out the center of that as well. That way it is completely ready to go. Then you have some really easy ones that are just straight edges. These you can use and just cut out with scissors. However, an X-Acto knife is also very quick and easy to use on these pieces. But as I'm cutting out, I like to make sure that I leave no white cardstock behind. If you do, that's okay. It will get covered up when you go and you use your inks on them. However, I like to keep it nice and simple and cut all that white off. Now for these straight edges, again, I like to use a ruler and an X-Acto knife. It makes a much quicker process. I like to use my Tim Holtz ruler. This is one of my favorites. I've had it for years. And an X-Acto knife and just trim up those edges very quickly. Now this can take a little bit of time. I like to do these in bulk a lot of times. Um, just because when I have this stuff out, I would much rather just make these and have them on hand ready to go. Now, once I have them all cut out, it's time to start thinking about how I want to back them. And that kind of depends on the project you're doing. It also depends on the color of the things I'm using. So for this postcard, I'm thinking I will more than likely turn it into a journal card. I wanted something with lines, so I used a note card. This tag, I want it to look a little bit more realistic. I'm using a red card stock. Those packaging, I'm using a craft card stock because that's how it would be backed normally if it were real. For my black photos, I'm using black card stock. And then for the rest of them, I'm using a tea dyed white card stock. That's gonna give me a nice writing surface so I can either turn it into a journaling card or I can just pop it on a piece of paper with some glue or staple it down or whatever. It's got a nice backing, sturdy backing either way. So to glue these down, I use a regular old Elmer's glue stick. You just wanna make sure that you're getting your edges down very well. 
You can use a liquid glue. I personally don't like one. I like to use a glue stick no matter what kind of glue stick it is. I also don't mind if I get a little bit on the front. That is going to give it more of a vintage look whenever you go and you ink over it. It's a really cool technique on its own. Some of my photos I actually printed onto sticker paper. So all I had to do was print them out, cut them out, and then I'll just peel off the backing paper and stick them down. This is another fun way to use up your sticker paper. And again, these do make great stickers. I just wanted them to be a little bit more sturdy. So I'm going to actually put them onto some black cardstock and that will give them a nice backing. Now for my little packages, I want them to go on to craft cardstock. So I've got this vintage Kodak film wrapper. I've also got my little coin protector and then also like a little chip, if you will. Those are all going onto the craft paper. I set them aside as I continue to glue. I kind of do this in an assembly line style. So they have some time to sit and dry then it's time to cut them out again. Could you put them down without cutting them out first? Absolutely you could. I'm just more stingy with the paper that I've spent time on making. So I cut them out first and then I just trim up against the edges. You'll also notice as I was putting these down, I put them in two corners. I didn't stick them right in the center of anything. That way I can use up all those little scraps that I'm cutting off. So that little journal piece that I cut off the side or that little L shape, I'll just rip that in half and throw that in my scrap bin. Now I cut out each and every one, but some of these are gonna have little openings that you'll need to go and cut out. Like this tag, I'm just gonna use my punch tool and punch out the center of that to make it look like a real tag. I'll also use my scissors on each one of these to go around the edges with the blade and just rough them up. I like to use my scissors for this. You could use a butter knife if you wanted to. There's also a tool, I believe by Ranger or Tim Holtz, I will leave it linked down below, that you can use to do this with, and it's kind of a safety thing. So if you have a problem with using the scissors, grab one of those tools. They're not very expensive. But I like to just use the blade of my scissor, go around the edge of this, and just really rough it up, give it that nice vintage look, you can even cut into it a little, a little bit, make it look more vintage. And I also went around the inside of that hole because if it's true vintage, there's not gonna be any part of it that is nice still. Then I come in with my inks and my brush. I ink blend around the edges. I'm not being careful here. I'm being a little sporadic and a little heavy handed. I do the front and I do the back as well. I like to use a lot of ink when I do this, and this is actually the Distress ink, and I believe Vintage Photo Now, the one before, I believe was brushed corduroy. So I use a couple different inks, I really go heavy handed, and I just start ink blending. Then once I have the edges kind of how I want, I could definitely leave it as is, but I like to go straight from the ink pad and really go into those uh, edges that I roughed up and take the ink pad straight to them. I'll even drop the ink pads a few times on some of these or kind of tap the, I'm using a tag here into the ink pad and just add smears and stains and that kind of thing. It's a lot of fun to play around with. You can go as grungy as you want. You could flick paint at this if you wanted to, that would be neat. You could add coffee rings, you could add fingerprints. There are a ton of different things you can do to these. This is just a very, very simple way of creating that vintage look. Now I'm gonna move on to this tag. So this tag actually had a hole in it where it had been fastened to something and you could tell that in the print off. So what I'll do is actually take my poke tool and just make those little holes that were already there to begin with. They just don't, you can't print a hole if you will. You have to go in with the tool and actually make those. So it just looked like white when it printed off. However, I'll just take my whole tool and make those holes in the paper itself. 
I use my scissors in the same way to rough up the edges. And then something I like to do with tags is fold them and crease them. And I'll do that a few times and that creates a nice vintage look as well. Then whenever I go and ink blend over this, it's gonna gather up a little bit of ink along those fold lines and it just creates those little extra bits. Once I get the brushing with my ink done, then I like to actually take that fold and just tap it right in the ink pad. That is going to just give it a little bit more darkness, make it a little bit more pronounced. It's just a fun little technique. I also like to go over the holes a little bit more. That just makes them a little bit more pronounced. And then again, just tapping it in the ink pad, giving it a little bit more grunge look. Again, so many different things you can do. You can flick paint at this. You can tap an ink pad like I'm doing here. You can do paint splatters. You can do ink splatters. You can do ink sprays. You can do brush strokes. So many different creative ways to make these feel more vintage. So there is that tag ready to go. I love the way this one turned out. Now moving on, I am going to show you some packaging next. That Kodak wrapper you see right up there in the right hand corner. So this is truly vintage packaging. All I did was print it off. Now I cut it out and then I'm actually going to use my scoreboard to make those folds where the original package had them. You can't print folds, all you can do is follow the lines and make them yourself. So I'm using my bone folder and my paper trimmer and just putting in those score marks to make it a little bit easier to fold. Now this is one of those times you want to make sure that you did use a good glue because as you're folding this, it's going to bend two pieces of paper now. So you want to make sure you have a good bond between those two or your top paper is going to lift off. And I like to do any folding like this beforehand because if you had a true vintage package, you're going to have the folds in it before you start having any of the smudges and the smears or the aging. So where those folds are, they're going to get more smudges. They're going to pick up more of that aging. So you want those in there as you're doing that so you build up more ink on them. So I'll go ahead and use my bone folder, make sure all those folds are nice and creased. I'll do it both ways just to make sure I get a nice fold line in there. And then it will be time to start the ink blending process. Again, I'm using the same ones that I used before. I'm using Vintage Photo and Brush Corduroy. They are distress inks that I love to create the vintage look. You can use any of the distress inks. You can use any ink you have on hand. If you don't have inks, use some paints. It really is up to you how you want these to look. I'm going in straight from the ink pad to finish it up. Something I should say too on this one, I distress not only the front but also the back of this just to give it a more authentic look. And there you can see how that one turned out. It's one of my favorites. I love using old package printables to create new vintage ephemera, if you will. Now, another thing I like to do, especially on my tickets, is put those creases in. So anytime I have a ticket that I'm using, I love to crease it up, fold it up a few times, give it some cracks, give it some tears. It just adds a little something extra and they don't have to be straight across. You can just fold a corner. Now you also wanna look at your printables like, and just see what there are on them. On this coin protector, there were actually staples. We well, can't print staples, so what I like to do is cover them up with real staples. So I used my inks, then I came in with my stapler and just stapled right over the printed staples to give it a more authentic look. So those little things can really take it to a whole new level. So as you're printing, as you're gathering your images, be thinking about ways you can add details to them after you've printed. Now this next one, this is actually going to be a journal card. So all I did was ink it up. You can go really simple too. That way I didn't add too much. You could still read my writing when I go and I write on the back of that. Something else to think about, if you're printing black and white photos, you might think that you can just leave them as is and that would be great and that's fine. 
However, I like to add a little bit of inking over the top of them just to give them a little bit of a yellow effect, a little bit of sepia tone, and that gives it a more aged look as well. So those are a few ways that you can use free images online to create your own vintage ephemera. These are my go-to techniques. I love searching and finding those vintage photos and tickets and images, printing them off and making them my own and into my own journals. Where I'm from, it is very hard to find vintage, true vintage items like this. So having the online resources and being able to print them and make them myself is something that I really love to do and that allows me to have all of these. So if you're like me and you don't have all the flea markets, you don't have all the antique shops, you don't have the time to go out and look for these, you can have them in your journals as well. All you need is a printer and some inks and you can easily make them yourself. I will leave some resources and some supplies linked in the description box down below. So be sure to check that out. If you haven't, be sure to subscribe as well. Thank you guys so much for watching and happy crafting.